Last time on Out Chasing Stars, we blew into Richards Bay, South Africa after an eight-day passage from Bali Bay, Madagascar. One of our propellers fell off, lost to the Mozambique channel, which necessitated a jump into the water to install our fixed prop spare. To add to the fun, we faced a few Mozambique channel storms that saw winds touching over 40 knots. Starry Horizons handled it all like a champ, though we felt better once we were tied up safe and sound. We've officially made it in to Richards Bay. You can see all the cruising boats behind me. A little weird, this is kind of one of those hubs where everyone coming across the Indian Ocean kind of comes into South Africa first. So it's nice catching up with people we haven't seen in a while. Weather is a little gray and cold, but after boiling in the Indian Ocean, feels pretty good. Not quite sure exactly how long we'll stay here, but long enough to get out, maybe do a little uh, touring, do a little few boat projects, and then we'll get ready to head around the coast. Getting around the coast of South Africa is all about waiting for the right weather windows. Without a good one in the forecasts, we were happy to stay and get our first taste of South Africa's native wildlife. We hired Anon as our driver to take us out to St. Lucia, a small coastal town with some big attractions. Off on another adventure this morning? Yeah, we have a great adventure. We are going on a little river cruise in the St. Lucia estuary. And our big target to look for is hippos. Yeah, those big hippos. And yeah. it's been raining the past few days, so the water's really high, so it should be pretty interesting. And I've also heard there's something else with a lot of teeth. Oh yeah, crocodiles. Yeah, <laughs> those can stay a little further away, I think. Stay in the boat. <laughs> We'd gotten to the boat early, which was definitely good because this was clearly a popular tourist activity. The crew gave a safety briefing, and then the skipper took us out into the extreme current. The water was so high, the wildlife was hard to spot, but fairly quickly, we saw something poking up. Is that our first hippo? It was our first hippo, even with a little baby. Yeah, I don't think I caught the little baby, but just peeking on up to get a breath. Yeah, it was very cute. Very weird looking too. Hippos are weird. They're a little odd, yeah. One hippo was good, but more hippos was even better. We saw some hippo teeth. Yeah, <laughs> yawning big. Very cool. Hey, what are you playing with there? I have an adult hippopotamus tooth. What? Yeah. Whoa. That it's pretty heavy. Big. Yeah, it is big, and I wonder how far into the gums it goes. I don't know, but I don't want to get crunched by that. No, thank you. The hippos weren't the only wildlife we got to see. One of those crocodiles made an appearance, as well as the nests of hundreds of yellow weavers. They make their nests in the reeds, but this year, the water was so high that many of the nests flooded and got washed away. Oh, yeah. 
it is super windy out and it has been so rainy the last couple days the river is like super high yeah uh, the captain is telling us is the highest he's seen in like 20 years and it's kind of interesting that hippos are like struggling to get their noses up above the water yeah it's cute it is cute but um there's a bridge We've, we've been struggling to get through it on the way out. I'm wondering if the river's been rising still. We're gonna get through on the way back. It might be a tight fit. Mm. Could be a very tight fit. Hey you. Hey. What did you think of our uh, estuary tour? It was good. Lots of hippopotami. Yeah. Are we sure that's the plural of hippopotamus? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> hippopotami. Yeah. The river was just so incredibly high. I couldn't get over that though. Yeah. The um, captain said that if the water was lower, the hippos would be like out of the water and sunbathing. So we really saw a lot of hippo snoots. <laughs> um, but that was still pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, we've seen hippos out of the water before on safari, so this yeah. was kind of something new. Yeah, it was very cool. Just the river tour alone would have made for an awesome day, but Anon had arranged for us to see even more wildlife. I'm, I'm a little surprised, babe. What are we doing now? We are continuing our day, and we're driving up to Cape Vidal. Looks like we're is, going into a park. We're going into the park, and he said it's about an hour drive up to the Cape and uh, we might get to see some game while we're on our drive. Man, what a day this is turning into. <laughs> Good job. What about that vista behind you? Oh my goodness. Really beautiful. And this is facing inland. So we've got the Indian Ocean back that way. And here we've got a lake, a small lake, but Anand says that it gets a lot bigger if there's enough water. Yeah, wow. It's just absolutely gorgeous out there. Yeah, it really is. Our first peak of the South African wilderness had been pretty amazing, but we felt we should wrap up the day with something a bit more familiar. Kind of just the cherry on top of a freaking awesome day getting a chance to see some of the south african wilderness you know amazing animals out in the wild but then to come to an absolutely gorgeous beach like i just i don't get sick of that you know i love watching the waves you know out here by the water it's a pretty good life time has come to leave richards bay we're gonna go um, in each of these ports in south africa that has customs and immigration and all this stuff we have to clear in and then also clear out. And we get to Durban, get into the whole process again. So yeah, gotta go do our clear out today. A very short weather window had opened up, so it was time to get a move on. 
Moving through the various ports in South Africa is a bit of a pain and requires lots of paperwork. Once we'd visited all the various offices around town, we set sail. It's time to start sailing around South Africa. Woo boy. Yeah, um, not gonna lie, little bit daunting coming around this coast. We've heard just so many stories about how it gets wild, it gets crazy. It is actually called the Wild Coast. So there you go. I mean, it's in the name. Yeah. So we have been tracking for about a week trying to find a weather window. Uh, we've got a nice one that'll give us maybe about a full day to get down to Durban from Richard Bay. It's about 90 miles. It's, um, it's just going to be about a 15 hour sail-ish for us. Um, so we'll be able to make that in plenty of time, get into Durban. There exists a possibility. Today is Thursday. No, today's Wednesday. Arriving to Durban tomorrow. On Friday, the winds are supposed to kind of clock around to the south for like six to eight hours, and it's supposed to be light. So it's maybe. Supposed to be light. Maybe. If that, the winds are, if it have been dropping in the forecast, if that stays light, maybe we'll be able to continue on. But at the very least, to Durban. Sounds good. We had to make our way through lots of the big ships anchored outside of Richards Bay, but there weren't many sailboats out there with us. With the hassle of clearing in and out of every port, most cruisers were trying to wait for a longer window to make a bigger jump down the coast. Our experiences with weather windows had taught us that you need to take what you can get, but you still need to be cautious. It is quite early and the sun is coming up. We once again find ourselves among all the big ships that are anchored outside Durban, ready to come into the port. And so are we. I made the decision to go just straight into Durban. It was, it was tempting to try to get all the way to East London, just make more miles on the coast, but the winds are definitely going to shift around to the south for a while. There's always a question of how strong they would be. We're not in a huge rush to get around to Cape Town, so if we don't have to put ourselves through that, we're just not going to. So instead, we're going to go into Durban, we're going to take it easy for a few days, looks like maybe early next week there's another weather window to continue around, so we'll take advantage of that one. This little jump down from Richards Bay was nice, smooth, and easy. Motor sailed for a lot of it because the winds were quite light. Um, we did keep a reef in the main, uh, pretty much straight from the onset just in case and you know what there were a couple squalls that rolled through and i was glad we had the reef in so just the coast the wild coast around here we're just gonna be cautious take it slow i think that's gonna be the best plan That looks like a big city behind you. That is a big city. Oh my goodness. A lot of high rises, a big port. Yeah. We have arrived into Durban. Hey, <laughs> you're not too bad. And lots of chatter on the radio. Lots of radio traffic. It turns out Durban is the third largest city in South Africa, but is the country's biggest port. It was massive. We elected to grab a berth at the Durban Marina in order to be nice and secure for any storms and for easier access to the city. While we waited for the next weather window, we got out and did a bit of exploring. What are we doing today, babe? We rented bikes on Durban's waterfront and uh, there's a promenade. We can bike for like six kilometers each way. So we're exploring the city. And uh, first stop, of course, we got to come out to the point. Yeah, this is where we came through just yesterday. 
No, it's nice to check it out from land, huh? Yeah, different view. It's laughing time, baby. Let's see how this goes. Getting down will be okay. I was just barely tall enough for the getting up part. Where did we end up now? I mean, what's our favorite treat after a little activity? Oh, it's gotta be ice cream. It is ice cream. <laughs> and I think it's coming now. All right. Yay! <laughs> okay, it's all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that comes here. <laughs> Thank you. We have now been in Durban for 10, 11 days, I think it is. And there is a weather window. It looks like it'll be a short one to jump all the way down to East London. This is kind of one of those things that just makes me a little nervous about this African coastline though, is uh, kind of jumping, you know, as after one front rolls through, jumping down with some northerly winds after that, and then have to get into East London, East London before the next front rolls through. So it's gonna be a, a short one. We're gonna have to make sure we get our speed up. We've been doing quite a lot to try to get the boat ready. Uh, had to organize some diesel delivery. I'm gonna send a huge thank you to Bronwyn here at the Durban Marina for helping us out with that. So she's all topped up. We can power pretty hard if we need to. All my calculations make it look like we should be able to make it. I think, I think we're gonna make a run for it. Staying in Durban for 10 days was longer than we thought we'd wait. And given that this window was another short one, we headed out quite early in the morning and a bit before the winds made their shift to the north. We did make the decision to leave Durban. Yes. It was early. Bite the bullet. 3 a.m. departure, yeah. which not super fun. Don't enjoy leaving places in the dark, but you know, Durban's so well lit, it was kind of like. It's actually very um, busy at yeah. 3 a.m. <laughs> Surprisingly, a lot going on. But yeah. We had to pull over to the side, let a ship pass, and then we could exit the harbor. So it all worked out. We are out in the open sea. Um, our plan is that the winds are kind of southerly to, were southerly to start out. They're now shifting around, um, around to our port side and then we'll be back behind us from the northeast for the majority of this passage. Cross our fingers. Um, we have a speed we have to maintain because there is a low pressure system that'll be rolling into East London um, tomorrow night and we want to make sure we beat that in. So we are motoring hard right now. Yes. We, we actually have both engines on. Both engines on, hammer down. Hammer down, which rarely ever do we do that. But uh, the idea is to you know, motor at a certain speed as we need to while the winds are from the south and swinging around. And then when they move to the north and fill back in and get stronger, then we can sail. Hopefully by that time we'll have found a helpful current. But we're planning this passage if there's no current. Yeah, so we'll see how it goes. Well, good news everyone, we found the current. And we are zooming along at 10 knots now. So um, that's good, kicking ass, hopefully we can keep it up. The wind, however, has absolutely died um, since our last report. It's, uh, it's not even around five knots, it's like two, one. 
so um, no sailing. We're just chugging along. Still got the engines full throttle, keeping up our speed really high, and uh, just taking advantage of everything we can. It's about 11.30 now. I have finally shut off one of the engines. The current has continued to stay up, so we are still hauling butt, and the wind has lifted, so we are now in about mm, 7 to 10 knots of true wind speed, and it has clocked around in sailable range. So I've got the Genoa up, and David's now up from his nap, so I think that when he finishes making lunch for me, we are going to get the mainsail up and try to actually do some proper sailing, but we are making great time, and that's really promising. We even got the screecher up along with the main, but turns out the light airs didn't last for very long. Well, that sure feels like it's uh, wind have increased a bit. Yeah, uh, winds have gotten as high as about 25 knots true wind speed, but they have shifted pretty far behind us. So right now we've got two reefs in the main and the Genoa, and they are both um, reaching, so yeah. And how, how's our speed? We're still going pretty fast? Um, our speed through the water is about six knots since we okay, reached. Okay, well that's about regular. Our speed over ground is 10 to 11. Okay, that's not regular. Yeah, so we are getting like definitely in the three to five knots range of current with us. So we're zooming along. It is 6 o'clock in the evening. We have 130 miles left to go. I mean, we're like halfway. We are halfway. Uh, and we've been going, let's see, we left at 3 a.m. So that is full, uh, 16 hours? 15, I think. Um, yeah, 15 hours, you're right. So we're chugging along pretty good. Yeah, this is lion but it, it's good to still, be going fast we want to beat that fast. low yep we want to get in and get comfortable in east london before it gets hairy so or before it gets hairier it's pretty hairy right now I think there is a sunrise somewhere back there. It is quite early in the morning, uh, still around like 4.45. But we are making awesome progress. We are only about 40 miles outside of East London right now, which means we are definitely going to be arriving well before that uh, low pressure system arrives late in the day today. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. Um, current is just absolutely wild, like three to five knots, just almost Ever since 30 miles south of Durban, we found the current and just stayed in it, which has been great. Uh, the weather, you know, hasn't been, hasn't been blue skies and beautiful, but that's all right. I was expecting more wind, to be honest. Uh, you know, some of our forecasts said we could have like 20 to 30 knots, and instead it's been maybe 15 to 22, uh, which, is, which is nice. We are deeply reefed, so we've been able to be conservative because the current's been helping so much, which is nice, rather than having to be kind of a little more aggressive with reefing and unreefing and all that stuff, but I feel good. I feel, uh, I'm glad that we decided to take this window. It's been a little bit bumpy, but we're getting down to East London. We're making progress on the coast, and that feels good. I had really agonized about taking this weather window, so getting into East London with plenty of time to spare was a big relief. As if to reinforce that we'd made the right decision, a pod of dolphins joined us to help guide us in along the coast. I'm 
seeing dolphins play in the bow just never ever gets old. Plus it feels kind of good with like a dolphin escort in East London. Uh, it just, life at sea feels a little safer, a little better when they're around I guess. So pretty, pretty awesome start to the morning. It is now 7 a.m., which is when I do my 24-hour logs, and we just absolutely smashed our previous 24-hour run record. Uh, we did 221 miles in the last 24 hours, which is a bit over 9.2 knots. That's smoking, like pretty damn incredible. I don't think I can quite count it as like our official record because we didn't sail the whole time. We were motoring pretty hard at the beginning of it just to make sure we were um, keeping our speed up before we gotten into the current. But man, 221 miles, that's pretty damn fast. We've got land behind us. We had to get through a little bit of a squall before we could kind of break through and now there's some blue sky. It's land, it feels good. We are gonna make it in before the storm. That feels great. Yeah, big sigh of relief to get this passage done and uh, crossed off the list. Uh, super glad to be in here before the storm. We'll get tied up, get hunkered down. Yeah, I think a, a nap's gonna be well deserved. East London is much smaller than Durban and the yacht club there offers trot moorings in the middle of the river. That was a new one for us but with Starry Horizons once again tied up safe and sound, we could focus on finding the next weather window and hope that it would take us all the way to St. Francis. Hey y'all, thanks for watching our adventure cruising the wild coast of South Africa. Getting to see all those awesome animals in Richards Bay was great and we were really glad to make it into Durban and East London as safely as we did. Good job planning, David. Our next video is going to be sailing all the way to Cape Town, but we stop along the way in St. Francis and check out the Balance Catamarans Factory. Stay tuned, y'all.